The road back to mobility after an amputation can seem daunting to say the least. Under the guidance of physical and occupational therapists, regaining mobility and an active life doesn't have to be an unattainable goal. It's important to get you moving right away after your amputation, and one of the most important steps will be the successful completion of a number of exercises designed to get you mobile once again. Functional mobility is the key to living well after an amputation. You often get deconditioned very quickly after surgery or hospital stays, and it's important to progress your mobility under the assistance of a physical and occupational therapist. Refining and mastering your activities for daily living will play a large role in your successful reintegration into daily life. Here's physical therapist Michelle Harui demonstrating a number of common exercises that patients will begin while still in the hospital. These exercises help to restore functional mobility, which must be achieved prior to being discharged from the hospital and before ultimately receiving a prosthetic limb. Mat or bed exercises are basic initial exercises that may not seem like they relate to movement in the future, but the muscles they are maintaining will assist in increasing the quality of standing, walking, squatting, and other functional activities right out of the hospital. This can also be crucial if you spend a lot of time in a wheelchair. It is important for any exercise program that if you experience any pain in any part of your body, that you immediately stop and consult with your rehabilitation team. Positioning. Initially, standing for long periods may be difficult. Contractures are the inability to bend and straighten your joints fully. For example, your hips and knees may be flexed from sitting long hours in the day. It is important to lie down on your stomach or flat on your back for 20 to 30 minutes two to three times per day to ensure that your hips and knees are straight once in standing. The following basic exercises will address the quadriceps muscles or muscles of the top of the thigh for people with below the knee amputations. Strong quadriceps muscles are important to prevent sudden uncontrolled bending of the knee when standing or walking with a prosthesis. Most of these exercises can be done on your leg that has not experienced an amputation as well. Quadriceps sets. Quadriceps sets are important to activate the thigh muscle that extends the knee. You may want a roll towel at the end of your residual limb to help straighten the knee. Contract your thigh and hold for five seconds, then release, then repeat. Straight leg raises. Once able to perform a quadriceps set with a fully straight knee, you will progress the exercises by lifting the limb off the mat and holding two to three seconds to perform a straight leg raise. Long arc quad will begin by sitting on the edge of the mat, table, or chair. Your body will be straight and not slouched. Your knee will be bent over the edge of the table. Proceed by straightening the knee fully and slowly bringing back to the starting position. Short arc quad will begin by lying on your back and placing your knee over a bolster. As in the previous exercise, it is important to bend and straighten your knee fully. The next four exercises will address the muscles around the hip and back of the thigh to aid in the quality of walking, squatting, and many functional activities in the future. It is particularly important if you have received an above the knee amputation but also important in below the knee amputations as well. Hip abduction. To strengthen your hip abductors or hip muscles on the outside of your hips, begin by lying on your side with the lower hip slightly flexed as shown. When lifting your leg to the side, your back, hips, and limb should be in a straight line without excess movement in your spine. Hip adduction. To strengthen your hip adductors, or muscles on the inner aspect of your thigh that close your legs, begin by lying on your side with the top leg bent or resting on a bolster. Lift your lower leg to meet the upper leg as shown. Again, your back, hips, and limbs should be in a straight line without excess movement in your spine. Hip extension. One way to strengthen the muscles of your hips is to begin on your stomach with your spine straight and lifting your leg to the back. Your lower back should not move and it is not necessary to lift your leg high. If you are unable to lie down on your stomach, begin on your back and with your limbs flat on the mat, squeeze the muscles in your hips or gluteal region. Bridging. 
Bridging begins lying on your back with your uninvolved side bent. If you have amputations of both lower extremities, both thighs can be placed on a bolster or soft roll. It is important to maintain a straight back aligned with the lower extremities to prevent back injuries. It is important to note that the rehabilitation timetable can vary from patient to patient and involves a commitment to work through the various stages. Reconditioning the body while still in the hospital, using many of the exercises just shown, is the first stage. Once a patient has regained functional mobility without a prosthesis, they can often return home and begin outpatient rehabilitation. After they've progressed to the point of being ready, patients will meet their prosthetist. This person will work with them to craft a prosthetic based on their specific needs. To learn more about the details involved in this part of the process, please make sure to watch Introduction to Your Prosthesis, which is part of this video series. Here's occupational therapist Shannon Grady discussing some of the initial training that you'll receive. After your amputation, an occupational therapist will work with you to be as independent as possible in all your basic daily activities. He or she will work with you on new ways to get dressed, bathe, use the bathroom, and on the skills you'll need to take care of yourself at home. You may receive new equipment to make these things easier. The occupational therapist will also work with you to learn how to safely get on and off a commode. As you improve, you will learn how to get on and off a toilet and in and out of the bath or shower, likely using a shower chair or tub bench. Here is UCSF patient Mark Dreyer and Lauren Hollander, a physical therapist from Laguna Honda, with some brief discussion on modifications in the living space. So Lauren from Physical Therapy at Laguna Honda has joined us to talk a little bit about dealing with the time period between having two feet and having one feet and back to having two feet again. And one of the problems is if you drop something, how do you get it? I quite often, since I stay in my chair a lot, I can very easily pick something up. If you're more mobile or you're someplace where you don't have your chair, how do you get down there? So I'm fortunate that I'm tall enough and have pretty good balance that I can balance on one leg, stay firm on one side, and reach far enough to pick it up and come back up. If you don't have that ability, there are things that can be used. So here's a reacher that we had talked about. It's just a, a grip on the end with a trigger. And from here, in the wheelchair, you can sit and pick up a water bottle. Here's Mark, once again, to discuss and demonstrate common transfers around the living space, both with and without assistive devices. So now I want to talk a little bit about the intricacies of moving around in your home or, or in a restaurant or um, anything like that. You'll probably go home in a wheelchair, at least I did. Um, the person that gives you the wheelchair will show you how to use it and operate it, but the biggest thing is there's a set of brakes, and every time you stop, you put the brake on. If you don't, when you go to sit in and it rolls out behind you and you're grabbing and there's nothing to get a hold of, next thing you know, you're on the floor and <laughs> trying to figure out, well, what do we do now? Another piece of equipment that I was sent home with was a walker. Um, some people are sent home with crutches. If you have good balance or tend to be younger, that works well. The walker worked best for me. So I have some balance issues. And the walker gives you something to lean on that's solid. Again, make sure before you do anything that it's solid. Um, if you get slightly to a side or you get too far ahead, you throw your balance out and then you don't know where you're gonna end up. So once we're there, it's just a matter of set and swing. Before you have your prosthesis, you're living in your um, shrinker and limb guard. So then the transfers are similar, but you only have one leg under you now, so you have to be a little more cautious. Um, again, make sure your wheelchair is locked. You lift the arm up. And again, carefully. 
making sure you're firm. You do your transfer. Same thing going back. <clears throat> Something with, a, with arms, it's sometimes easier to be at somewhat of an angle. Again, lock so that you kind of have the, the area to swing into. And again, without the leg, it's much more difficult. And again, if you have any questions with this, talk to your physical therapist, talk to your occupational therapist, talk to your doctor, talk to somebody. Make sure you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then again, we're transferring to something a different shape, a little lower. Again, lock. Get the arm out of the way. Make sure you're solid. And transfer. And then coming back, again, making sure everything is stable and sturdy. And you're back in. And then transferring to a stool. We spoke earlier. Make sure that where you grab it, make it stable. And again, it's a matter of Transferring once and to stand with and back. Another way to transfer, as we talked earlier, was with a walker. And again, push up. You end up with your all your weight on your good leg. And you just do your pivots. Find the chair with the other hand and sit. Sometimes you can't get as close to a place you want to sit as you can, so the walker works out. So you just get up and just take your time. Make sure you're firm. Again, find something behind you and you guide yourself down. There's a big difference once you're in your prosthesis and bef before you get the prosthesis. With the prosthesis, you have a lot of your balance back, a lot of your pushback. So I'm gonna to transfer to just a plain chair. On the side of most wheelchairs, there's a removable arm. And you wanna get as close to the chair as you can get. And you basically just lift yourself with your upper body over. And then you're seated. Same thing going back, make sure you're locked. I, I can't stress that enough. And the first time you forget to do it, <laughs> you'll remember then as well. So then you're back in the chair and you're back in. Going to an armchair is a little more complicated because you have to navigate around the arm. So perhaps you want to come at the chair a little differently, an angled instead of straight on. And then it's just a matter of finding what's comfortable for you, where to push, where to hold. And again, you're supporting um, your upper body, you're, you're lifting your upper body. And then you're seated. One of the facts of life is that we all have to use the restroom. Uh, my apartment is, has a very narrow door, so I have to wheel up to it and then use a walker. This setup has a wide enough door that we can roll a wheelchair all the way in. And again, the transfer is very much the same. Position yourself. Make sure that your chair is locked. Lift the arm. Again, find your stable place and transfer. And coming back, basically the same thing. And unfortunately, my home is the door's too narrow, so I have to use a walker to get into the bathroom. And again, make sure your everything is firm and everything is placed. And find where you're going. I just noticed something. Uh, tile floors are quite often slick, so be careful. Find the seat where you're headed. And you sit. And then to get up, make sure you place and place and lift. Sometimes you're able to get into the bathroom and sometimes you're not and you have to use a device called a commode that's 
brought to you in your bedroom or living room or wherever you are. And it's much the same, the transfer, again, make sure you're locked, make sure that where, you're, where you are and where you're going is solid. Uh, lift the lid, get the arm out of the way, and again, find your firm places. and transfer. And when you're finished, you come back. Many people are nervous about using stairs after an amputation, but they are often a reality of life outside the hospital. Your physical therapist will instruct you on how to traverse stairs safely with crutches and possibly the use of a railing if available. Finding or regaining balance is an integral part of the recovery process for below knee and above knee amputees. As with all exercises, it's important to work with your rehabilitation specialist to determine the best approach for strengthening balance. As you progress with your prosthetic and begin to reintegrate with your previous level of activity out in the world, it's likely that you'll continue with outpatient rehabilitation from time to time. During this time, your occupational therapist will help you to better navigate real-world obstacles such as curbs, stairs, and different types of surfaces. You will work closely with your rehabilitation team to create exercise and functional mobility-based programs that advance each one of these areas of fitness and ultimately to improve your quality of life. Many people are very successful and progress to higher level sports programs. No matter what level you're at, it'll be important to actively participate in your rehabilitation to ensure the success of your program and the achievement of your own personal goals.